A typical school in Bikaner's outlying villages in Rajasthan would have just three rooms. Often, two classes are conducted at the same time in a single room, with children sitting in rows back to back, making it hard for students to understand anything over the day. It is no wonder then that less than half the students in class 5 can read a paragraph or do a math sum from class 2 books. School teacher Sangeeta Kashyap from Indore, Madhya Pradesh is famous from being absent from work for the last 23 years of her 24 year old career. Transferred to Ahilya Ashram School in 1994, she went on maternity leave and never reported back for duty. But dutifully collected her salary for all those years, amounting to over 1 crore rupees. Indian children rank 73rd out of 74 countries in the International PISA test of reading, science and arithmetic, just ahead of Kyrgyzstan. The UPA government was so embarrassed that it banned the test. This is the deep hole what our new National Education Policy 2020 needs to fix. This 63-page policy document presents a grand vision for the next 20 years and shows what education will hopefully look like in India in 2040. Released in July by the current and former HRD ministers, it updated the obsolete 34-year-old policy framed during the Rajiv Gandhi era. Azim Premji, one of the largest philanthropists in the world and actively involved in education in India, is very pleased. NEP 2020 responds almost completely to the policy wish list that almost everyone would have had. So what are the main changes in NEP 2020? Change number one. While the Right to Education Act 2009 gave children the right to school education from classes 1 to 8, NEP 2020 added to it three years of pre-primary education, including the role of village Anganwadis in formal education. Numerous studies for decades have shown the importance of learning and exposure in the ages of 0 to 6 and its impact on the child's future. Children who are not able to read by the age of 10 usually find it challenging to grasp what is taught in higher classes. Without foundational learning, children often fail to flourish. To do this, formal education has been changed from age 3 to 18 instead of the prevalent 6 to 14 years in what will be the 5 plus 3 plus 3 plus 4 system, replacing the 1 to 10 plus 2. Change number 2. Less board exam stress. While for the present time board exams for standard 10 and 12 will continue, comments made by the HRD minister scared students. Instead of one, there will be two board exams in a year. But we will make it simpler. Still, the very words board exams evokes fear in students. However, what he probably meant is that the system will change from one exam to continuous evaluation with the final exam not being as important. With exams having both objective and subjective types of questions, that makes learning relevant, transparent and fair. Change number three, two levels of education. Many students have difficulty with subjects like mathematics and science. So keeping them in mind, after class 4, two levels of maths will be introduced. Basic maths and a higher, tougher level for those who want to make a career in the sciences. Change number 4. Skills more important than rote learning. Realizing that artificial intelligence and robots will soon replace all type of repetitive tasks, NEP 2020 will teach vocational education like coding, electronics, carpentry alongside the regular school curriculum from class 6 which is now defined as the beginning of secondary education. So if for any reason a child dropped out of school but had basic knowledge of mechanics, he would still have a skill that could feed him. Change number 5. 360 degree education. Which child at the age of 12 or 15 knows what he or she is going to do for the rest of their lives? So from standard 6 onwards, to expose children to a variety of disciplines, they will be allowed to study whatever interests them. A child studying computers may want to explore literature or anything else. A civil engineer building a dam needs to understand its environmental consequences. Change number 6. Common entrance exams like SAT for college admission. Board results alone will no longer determine admission and each university can have their own entrance exams or accept the common test score overseen by the National Testing Agency NTA. Change number 7. Graduating at 12 plus 4 instead of 12 plus 3, with each year having a paper value. Copying Western education, the new NEP increases the time to graduation by one year. However, this may not be what India needs. Most people want to start earning money and get into the job market sooner rather than later. Plus, parents will have to incur additional costs for this extra year of education. And what about the extra infrastructure of classroom and teachers? 
an area already beset with problems. Currently, of the 13.77 lakh Anganwadi centers, over 3.5 lakh do not have toilets and 1.5 lakh do not have drinking water facilities. Of 60 lakh teaching posts in government schools nationwide, 10 lakh are vacant. After the use of Aadhaar, it was discovered that 1 lakh 30,000 teachers never even existed but kept collecting salaries. When teachers are absent, illiteracy increases. Jharkhand has the highest number of vacant teaching posts and the lowest rate of literacy, while in Himachal Pradesh and Maharashtra, it is the opposite. Absent teachers drag down overall literacy rates in India, which are far worse than our BRIC peers, Brazil, Russia, China and South Africa. Change number 8. Each college a university. Right now, irrespective of the college you are studying in, you will have to sit for a board exam conducted by the state university. If you are studying in Karnataka, you will have to sit for the KSEEB exam, in Maharashtra, SSC or HSC, in Orissa, the BSc Orissa, and if you are in Rajasthan, you will have to appear for the RBSE board. NEP 2020 allows each college to conduct their own exam and award their own certificates. Just like it is done in America and the UK, where over time the best colleges make a name for themselves in teaching and research. Change number 9. Opening the door to world-class education 100 to 200 of the world's top institutions will be permitted to set up branches in India, providing our students with international education at a fraction of the cost. The draft NEP of May 2019 required foreign educational institutions to follow the Indian curriculum. However, it is heartening to note that a year later there is a 180 degree change as they will be given autonomous status and can follow their own education standards. But while permitting foreign universities to earn, why else will they come? On the other hand, NEP wants private schools to work not for profit, an unfortunate holdover from the socialist days of Indira Gandhi's Congress. Change number 10 recommends teaching in the mother tongue till class 5. Already over 50% of students complete their secondary education in one of 12 Indian languages and senior secondary level in one of 8 languages other than English. However, data clearly shows that English is increasingly becoming a link language, that is the probability of two Indians being able to converse in a common language. The proportion of children studying in English almost doubled from 12 to 23% in 10 years between 2007-8 and 2017-18. States like Andhra have completely switched over the entire medium of education to English right from primary levels. India got its first taste of formal education when British statesman Baron Curzon of Kedleston came to India as Viceroy in 1898. At that time, four out of five villages were without a school. Three boys out of four grew up without any education and only one girl out of 40 attended any kind of school. He increased the number of primary schools from 93,000 in 1901 to 118,000 in 1911-12, an impressive feat of almost seven schools every single day. To understand how outstanding this statistic is, for NEP 2020 to fulfill its stated mission of increasing gross enrollment ratio in higher education from 26 to 50%, it will require the government to set up at least one new higher education institution each week for the next 20 years. It was Indira Gandhi's government in 1968 that framed India's first education policy. We propose to spend 6% of GDP on education, a target we have still to achieve if we want to accomplish NEP's goals. The introduction of midday meal schemes in schools is the most important innovation in education policy that has happened in the recent past. It was hoped that children would continue their education. At least my son gets free breakfast and lunch in a government school. But the moment a family can earn enough, they remove their children from government schools and send them to private schools. Despite free education, free midday meals, free books and free uniforms, Low-income families are rejecting government-run schools in huge numbers. Between 2010-11 and 2017-18, the number of students in public elementary schools dropped by 2.38 crore, while it increased by 2.1 crore in private unaided schools. So bad is the exodus out of public schools that 68% of them have less than 100 students in their entire school, while some had just 5 to 7 students attending on any given day. Underuse of schools is not only inefficient, it also costs the taxpayer more than 40,000 rupees per pupil per year just in teacher salaries. But parents simply seek better education for their children. 
Parents have the perception that private schools perform better even if they do not. 23% of children in standard 1 of a private school could not read letters of the alphabet. But in public schools, it was more than twice that at 56%. Similarly, 18% of private school kids could not recognize the basic numbers of 1 to 9, while it was 46% in government-run schools. When schools become ineffective, income coaching classes, unflatteringly called surrogate mothers. School students taking coaching classes declined from 2014-2018 due to rising enrollments in private schools. 21% students opted for private tuitions in 2017-18, 6% lower than 4 years ago. Bihar, Karnataka, Tamil Nadu and Uttarakhand saw the highest declines. In West Bengal, 72% of children go to government schools, by far the highest among major states. And so it has the highest tuition levels, with nearly 84% of urban school students attending some form of it. While Telangana, which has just 12% of its urban students in government schools, has the lowest dependence on private tuitions at 5%. Since few among the decision makers at the centre or in the states send their own children to public schools, they are in no urgent need to fix this long time problem. Since we cannot rely on the bureaucracy to fix the system, the framers of NEP 2020 have based their success on the policy solely on the quality and presence of teachers. But that itself is a problem. Two out of eight teachers are absent and from the balance six, many are not capable or not interested and just collecting salaries. Despite CCTVs put in classrooms, digital attendance sheets, photos of ongoing classes, teacher upskilling, there has been no improvement. 91% of 7,30,000 teachers tested in 2012 failed the basic teacher eligibility test. To top it up, government teachers are forced to spend time in non-teaching activities like vaccination drives, election duties for national, state, corporation, bipoles, be a part of the flag-waving crowd when foreign dignitaries visit India, and other government activities like census collection, etc. In 2000, then Prime Minister Atal Bihari Vajpayee realized, Despite 50 years of reform, government schools are still failing. He proposed a solution. When a child reaches the age of 5, he should automatically get a monthly scholarship. Where the parent can decide where to spend this money, in a public or private school, where both will charge fees. Teachers are paid salaries from income a school earns and not from government grants. So they have to show up, teach with inspiration, or else the school will close down. An example for this kind of governance exists. Government employees get 27,000 rupees per year for their child's education. Compare that with 40,000 rupees the government spends on running nearly empty schools. The education ministry is working on a time-bound plan for implementation. The policy contains many low-hanging fruits that can be harvested in five or fewer years. NEP also recognizes the role and will rely more on public philanthropic partnerships like the Azim Premji Foundation. If the most difficult actions are not taken early enough, the momentum gathered by the proclamation of this excellent policy will be lost. NEP 2020 has many other facets. We could not cover them all, but we thought this would give our readers a basic idea of what it is all about. Bizbo's Limerick Rethinking our education is an important task. We better get our act together as the world's moving fast. No child left behind should be our calling line to claim our future and remain unsurpassed. Subscribe to Bizbo and click on the bell icon to get notified whenever Bizbo releases a new video. Sources of all our information is listed in the video description section.